Okay, so as an introduction, I'm, I'm talking to Angela Byrne. I uh, don't know a lot about her, but I met her maybe four or five times on Bold Street. Yeah. Uh, I took a, a portrait first time round, and it was a portrait that I really liked because it worked really well in black and white. Um, apart from that, I know she's an artist and she's pretty useless at answering messages. Yeah. Uh, but we got here anyway, so first thing I'd like to talk about, and we've covered it in the sort of preamble, is the, your background. So, artist now, but where did you come from and where did the uh, creative side to you come from? Okay. Um, th there are puzzles in there because I've just said to you that my earliest sort of imp impressions was where I was brought up until I was six years old on the dock road in Liverpool, like literally five minutes away from the pier and so it was very um, lots of dereliction and tall but beautiful um, warehouse buildings and things like that and a constant sense of the river mm -hmm. the thing was I was really short sighted little girl and nobody noticed they thought I was clumsy and a daydreamer and in fact I was really really short sighted mm -hmm. so when it got identified when I was 10 um I, I didn't particularly like seeing the world in proper focus, you know. They gave me glasses and I was like, whoa, not sure, about, like this. Not sure about this. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so then when I did pick, pick up the arts in school, the family were going, so who is she? Where's she come from? You know, none of us are. Um, and I was like, somebody had been dropped in their tribe. And un you were the sort of cuckoo's egg. Eggs, yeah. But then... If you look now, all of them are creative, except the younger ones because they've got a different dad, maybe. Um, but all creative in their different ways, and so I'm not so much a cuckoo now. Right, creative in what ways? Okay, um, mix a photographer. And this is your son. Oh, sorry, this is my brother. I've brother, got one, right? One okay. of my brothers. Yeah, yeah. I've got loads of them. Um, mix a photographer. Terry is like a gardener. He is a gardener with the most extraordinary sight and uh, sense thing happening. Yeah, he can make magic. Mm. Um, also, he really appreciates art. His house is full of lovely little things. Um, my older sister, maybe not so much. She's good at kind of presenting herself as beautiful, if you like. Yeah. Uh, but that's, with know. style yeah 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 yeah. Thanks. yeah yeah um and then there's me and then the younger ones maybe there's less obvious um creativity there different approaches to survival living doing better than survive they're by a different dad mm -hmm. um yeah okay so you that was your home life as a child, but family life um, once you got married or uh, set up home yourself? Okay. So I'd been to art college. Nothing was wasted in, in that experience. In fact, the foundation year at St. Helens, <coughs> the foundation year at St. Helens was wonderful. The next three years in Lancaster was a bit more um, subduing then I left college, went to work as a clerk somewhere, because really there weren't jobs for working class arty women. Mm -hmm. uh, I got married, had two kids, and got, wait, well, okay, my husband went away to sea. So I didn't work until the youngest child was two, and he'd been made redundant. Um, and then I became a peripatetic artist in the community. Okay, go back to St. Helens then, because St. Helens doesn't present as a hotbed of creativity, no. but you're saying that that was more, made more of a contribution than your Lancaster degree. Yeah. Go on, explain that then. then. I would think that most of the people on that first, that year one year foundation you do, um, I would think more of them were pretty kind of working class. Yeah. There was no shock to my system about um, 
you know, there wasn't anybody saying when I walked up the Andean pyramids with, um, I don't know, some television presenter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, but there was in Lancaster. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. in St Helens, it was more earthed. Yeah. Um, more grounded. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And while you were at Lancaster, which could have been, should have been a formative period, did you struggle then? I did. I yeah. did. First of all, really discovering how working class I was. Yeah. Although I probably wasn't phrasing or terming it like that then. Yeah. Um, but also I was homesick. Mm -hmm. I came from this big family where your edges were all you kind of knocked off every day, you know. you. Um, yeah, I was, I was lonely. And did you create much when you were there? No, I created more in the year at St Helens. Really? Yeah. Oh, crikey. Yeah. I'd say nothing's ever lost. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything is ever lost. But I didn't, I didn't gain anything that made me happy, really. Uh -huh. So then I got married and had kids. <clears throat> Became a peripatetic artist in the community. And then I slid sideways into social work. Mm -hmm. In fact, that was through an arts programme. You moved into social work. So you just tell me a little bit about that and how it might link into where you are now in terms of creativity. <clears throat> um, well, the first sort of slide into social work was in adult mental health services and being able to communicate with people and encourage people to communicate through art um, gave me a kind of uh, a foothold mm -hmm. in in that work, and that was that was a really enjoyable, creative time. Um, not with me teaching people art, but engaging in artistic, creative projects with with people. Mm -hmm. And you were back with your people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that uh, you grew up in Kirby. I spent 10 years working there. You worked in mental health. I w managed a mental health service for about four years. Right. Um, so the, the parallels are there. Okay, so social services and then? Um, How did that develop? I, I moved from adult social work, adult mental health work into child and family child protection work um, flip that was um, a shock to the system mm -hmm. and often I, I guess just being creative in approaches to people mm -hmm. had had um, gained the trust I suppose it's a lot it's like, about communication. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and we did you train as a social worker yeah, eventually? Yeah. Then? Yeah, right. qualified. Yeah. yeah. And was your social work training any more satisfying than your art? Training? Oh, it was actually. Yeah. 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 Chance to really uh, think and examine what you were doing, and mm -hmm. yes, I, yeah, I enjoyed it. Good. Okay, and then moving on to your, uh, well, what was the next step after social work then? I'm just the final, moving into... The final t um, time in, in that career was with um, child mental health services and all of the children I worked with were, um, they called the terms looked after, meaning mm -hmm. they were in foster care and had um, reasons not to be in families, birth families. So I was just explaining something to Alex that uh, um, that meant a whole story, narratives of their lives were got lost mm -hmm. um, if they ever existed, you know. Yeah. So um, using art and uh, uh, an approach to storytelling um, I think was really fruitful with, with those children. Mm -hmm. 
And this would be at a time when I was in mental health, which was 93 to maybe 97, it wasn't acknowledged that children had mental health issues. No. Uh, and then the sort of CAMS, which was children and ad adolescent That's mental health. That's who I was with those last 12 years. That came years. in, but prior to that, if you were a child, well, you might have behavioural issues, but you didn't have mental health issues no. because they weren't acknowledged. That's right, and they yeah. were still naughty children. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so next step then? Okay, um, then um, those services were being hacked at and hacked at and hacked at and it became less and less possible to do creative work. You were, um, it almost felt like a, an embarrassing pretense at mental health work with children you know six weeks in do this program as some cr computer has created it do that yeah. and out and so at that point I thought no I'm 60 I'll give it up <laughs> right okay then moving on to the now w what do you focus on right okay shall I tell you what's happened recently go on yeah wherever uh, you want to go okay here on we're all there's a really, really good art gallery called the Williamson, mm -hmm. and um, they have a, an open exhibition. Anyone on we all can submit work, um, and it won't always be accepted. But they'll then have a, a we all open show, Williamson open show, and I got I've had sort of three pieces in over the years, um, and then there weren't. It didn't happen last year or the year before because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, but it's happening this year and so I made this big decision about these are the two pieces I want to show and that was hard because you kind of wrestle mm -hmm. oh, um, this one that one is it finished no you know. yeah. so I resolved that by bunging the, the two I'd chosen in for framing and saying that's out of the way but then I took them to submit on Saturday and one over there is too big right. I hadn't seen the uh, and it's only too big by one centimetre <laughs> just file off the edge of the frame yeah. you'll be okay <laughs> yeah. yeah um but that's where that's what makes me go ooh when i'm doing things like that you i'll point it out to you when we, we're done i'll do some pictures of your work if that's okay oh okay yeah um it's from a drawing i did in situ at a waterfall in conway mm -hmm. about three years ago um Gosh, that was a cold day. Um, but this drawing, I I feel it's got life. Mm -hmm. So I've been painting from the drawing kind of over and over and over again. Now I've got about four versions of it. Um, and the other thing that that's a bit, was a bit preoccupying, especially in lockdown, was walking around. There's a place here called Bidston Tip. Right. What used to be the tip, mm -hmm. terrible smelly thing, and oh. they landscaped it. So now it's absolutely beautiful landscape okay. and this body of water. So for three months solid, me and a friend walked round the tip and then sat looking at the lake. And so I was drawing and drawing and drawing from that. Um, I've sold a few. All oh, right, yeah. Nice one. Well, that's another parallel because during lockdown I couldn't go and do my street portraits yeah. of strangers so I did various things including uh, photographing trees not full not the whole tree yeah. but sort of details and sort of small um, some of it was okay it wasn't me it wasn't what I wanted right. to do uh, it was a stopgap but uh, I did spend a lot of time on it yeah. and, uh, and the other was sort of uh, toadstools and fungus Right. So, um, and they were interesting, but uh, as I say, it wasn't where I wanted to be. But because they don't talk, <laughs> they don't talk. Absolutely right. Yeah, that's p exactly it. Okay. Uh, so you've got your stuff in uh, in for the the exhibition, hopefully. With well, it, 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 it's not necessarily accepted. The one that they did take off me, yeah. and now I'm th thinking about another piece, obviously in a smaller frame. <laughs> that I can submit because there's two submission dates Friday, Saturday come in I yeah put something in yeah. okay so 
and how much time do you spend on your art? In any one day? Well, on average in a week. Oh, uh, go on. On average in a week, I'd probably say 10, 11 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to hold you to it. It's, no, no. Uh, but it's, <laughs> but it's, it's good for me to to it, actually um, give that some consideration. Yeah. Um, I'll come on to it in a bit, but the, the next question is about what does your work say? What are you, or what are you seeing through your work? Okay. Mm -hmm. I actually think it is a very... Um, an attachment to nature, nature, water bodies particularly, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, you can maybe think about that and come back to it if I will do, yeah. yeah. It's interesting that uh, I'm a fisherman. Uh, and I've been a fisherman since I was about 12, uh, ups and downs in the last couple of years with Covid less so, but passionate about it. But in difficult times, I go to the water. Yes. <laughs> so in extremis, I go to the water. Um, and that's just, there's a spiritual thing there. So yeah. you, you're probably talking about something similar with your um, environmental stuff. Yeah. Yeah doing the um, social work qualification I would promise myself if I finished this paragraph or this page I could go for a walk and I'd <laughs> go out of my house walk less than 15 minutes up to Harrison Drive look at the river remember to breathe and come back and, and then I could yeah, just touch in the sense of it yeah mm -hmm. yeah I can uh, I, I can understand that you touched on this a little bit right at the start about um, having artists in the family, but what do your family and friends say about your work? Oh. <coughs> but, okay, so somebody this morning, I actually was telling a couple of friends this morning I was a little bit anxious about doing this. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's really terrifying, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Go on. I want to kick you now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, one of the friends said, um, she said, well, what she wanted to, to tell me was that I put myself wholly into my work. You mm -hmm. know, it's not kind of, um, it's about feeling and I do only you're already more animated, yeah. interestingly. Right. In talking about this, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, like those pieces, I actually want to move while I'm doing them. It's a bit almost like I could do dance with, mm -hmm. with the materials, you know. Um, so. Yeah. so, anything else? Would you say that family and friends are supportive for what you do? Or? Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. They, they weren't. My my particular brothers and sisters couldn't make any sense of it. It's like, who is she? Who is she? You know. Um. But. Yeah, I think I think they've all come round to seeing that. Um, They've come around to thinking it's okay, the, the work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, convinced through quality? I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's not spiritual, is it, though, really? It's, uh, you need needed to deliver for them to, to appreciate what you were doing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, are there any artists or styles that influence what you do? Ah, okay. This is an interesting question because I was thinking about this last night and earlier this morning. Um, it goes across a huge range. Um, and lots of it is sculptural. Mm -hmm. um, Brancusi 
the Romanian sculptor? I don't know. No. No. no yeah, this just really. Good. I'll check him out, or well, or um, her. Yeah, him. Um. um Paula Rago, I love being a bit frightened of her art. Do you mm -hmm. know who I mean? No, 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 no. Okay, not she's Portuguese. Um, and she, she does things that I, I, I can draw figuratively, mm -hmm. um, but I can't paint fig figuratively. Um, Paula Rago's stuff is the stories of families and lives lived in her early life, I guess, in Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's always something a little bit dark about them. <laughs> She's very, very good at um, creating kind of slightly spooky children. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting, there's a, a famous photographer called Richard Avedon, and he was massive and he worked for Harper's Bazaar and for Vogue, a lot of the front covers for Vogue were Richard Avedon for years and years. But in later life, he got into portraits and talked about he only ever photographed things that frightened him. Hmm. So he did a lot of photographs of his dad when he was dying. Oh. Yeah, so that sort of thing. And uh, some of the uh, the portraits he took were sort of prisoners and that sort of thing, and uh, quite sort of scary characters. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So you mentioned a couple of people. Anybody else that uh, comes to mind? Um, there was, this, I suppose, the school of um, the Bauhaus, the German the group of artists, where for the first time I think women were included, and they were still maybe doing women's artworks. Like there was an incredible weaver in that mm -hmm. group, um, Annie Albers and other women artists in that group, which was unusual then mm -hmm. for women to be uh, recognised and equal mm -hmm. to the males in the group. But, um, th and that period of, of time before, uh, before Hitler's politics mm -hmm. began to shake German art well down, the German art well down. Mm -hmm. um, so... Because 20s and 30s Berlin would have been the ap absolute epicenter of yes. creativity. Yeah. And, uh, sort of the Bauhaus is a wee bit earlier than that. Uh -huh. So there are lots of um, our, uh, architects, wait a minute, our, uh, think of an amazing architect who did um, No, they won't come to me, but lots of architects in that group as well. It really, really influenced um, modern architectural designs. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I'm going to take you back to Lancaster briefly because you, of what you said, <coughs> being working class at Lancaster was an issue for you. Was being a woman at Lancaster an issue for you as well? Yeah, I was the only girl in the right. Aeromedia group. Yeah. And the tutors were all male, except for one um, who I hardly had access to. And I'm pointing off because she was on the floor above us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, thinking about her, there, there were women who were more masculine, if you like, uh -huh. in their approaches than, than some of the men, you know. Do you think that was maybe a survival? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tactic. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Next one then is about thinking time. Uh, and I know from my own creativity, I do more thinking and planning when I'm walking the dog oh, yeah. than I am when I'm taking photographs, I'm busy, I'm active, uh, and obviously you're thinking, but the, a lot of the creativity comes at other times. Absolutely. So, so can you sort of give me... Walking particularly. Yeah. Um, I, I 
I mean, I have in the, in my history, you know, done lots of walking in Wales and mm -hmm. up hills, mountains, and so on. Um, but now it's a daily thing. If I didn't manage to walk some point in it my day, mm -hmm. with or without company, um, I'd be deprived. I'd feel deprived, and you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it is simply the act of one foot in front of the other and your mind being a bit freed up. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, what I'm doing at the moment, when I said about uh, going out and taking photographs of trees and fungus and whatever, I go to a, it's called the Burgies, which is a, the waste out of Pilkett and the glass Oh, no, go on. Um, and the dog loves it there, but I go more than I should do. I should be going to other places, but that's the place where the thinking happens. Yeah. I don't know, it's almost animalistic, I suppose, where you sort of find a route and, and a pace and mm -hmm. I suppose regular comforting sights, things visually that you, you recognise and you so on. That's where I was with the tip. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also the measurement of the year. It was the Mm -hmm. Trees change, the birds change, so on, so on, so on. But you just mentioned, where, what did you call it in St Helens? The, the Burgies. Burgies, okay. When I was at my foundation year, they did set me free with a camera. Yeah. Um, and I think I understood it a bit more than I would now. <laughs> and I wandered off into a area of Pilkington's yard where there was this like glass slag mountain. Mm -hmm. I, I remembered this right. I know exactly where it is, yeah. Yeah. And so I was taking photographs, and then when I got, I developed them in the dark, dark room, there was all mad things happening because there was a refraction of light, and. Yeah. I don't know what has happened. <laughs> it was out of my control what yeah. was going on with the, the glass and things, yeah. But, yeah, I enjoyed all it. Right, yeah. Um... Yeah, so that's just, it's a routine. I'll do that probably four days a week. Um, the dog loves that area anyway. That helps, isn't it? Um, and that helps, but it's just thinking time. It's like, as you say, you're almost closing your mind to everything. And because it's such a routine, that the thinking about that disappears. Yeah. And it's all the creative stuff that comes in. Mm -hmm. so, good, good. Uh, right, next thing is, why the heck did you set a studio up at this time of life? That's a good one. Could afford it. <laughs> Could, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. You know, when you said you'd done it, I thought, oh, go girl. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So was, was it really down to sort of having the resources to? Yeah. I, d I did um, have a space and then I obviously spilled out of the space yeah. <laughs> and taking up the dining room wasn't great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also there was the the sense of being off off duty. Um, I get that here. So it was almost it's work, and I don't know what I'm saying there. It wasn't the separation between the home and. And your work, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the, so this is a s asylum in yeah, yeah. in the right sanctuary, sense. sanctuary, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so you you set the studio up in August last year. So this this st these studios have apparently been running for about four years, I think. Yeah. Some people have been here that long. Um, then I discovered it earlier on last year. So the, the studios introduce you to lots of other artists on oh, site. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah. has that had an impact on your work or the way that you do it? Or? Yeah, there's a woman up the top end of the, the room and she's so generous and uh, gets excited. Yeah. So she'll look at my stuff and she'll go, oh, you've got to go big. So she provides me with this huge roll of paper. Oh, good, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and things like that, of following other people's ways of approaches and mm -hmm. ways of working. And for me, recognising there's no way I'm going to be 
a portrait artist like somebody over there is because yeah. she can even tell you the brand of and the code of the colour that she's using. Yeah. Yeah. I'm never that method methodical at all. Yeah. Um, and then there's a person at the, the end of the room as well, uh, an Italian man who's, this made me go, ooh, um, charted the tides of the river and the bay, mm -hmm. Bay, um, and then coded it. And he's got up there <laughs> sort of the bed of a of grand piano and he's got a mechanism that's then playing the tides as they've been coded over right. the year. Like, oh. Where did that come from, I wonder? Yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. So that's external influence. Uh, second last question then is, is there a grand plan? No. <laughs> no. Just doing it? Just doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere that you'd like to get to with your creativity? No, you know, I couldn't ever see me doing any of those, you know, television program things like that. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. No. So just you're just doing it, enjoying it, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And well, it's not about making money either, because well, yeah, as, as I said to you recently, um, where I have sold something, I've gone. Okay, that pays for the studio next month. Or yeah. 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 Right. Just. Yeah. Wonderful. And the last question, which I'm asking everybody, is about the impact of. Liverpool on their creativity so has the city had an impact on you as a person as you as an artist yeah that's my core I'm um, core Liverpoolian mm -hmm. well, not Scouser Liverpoolian yeah and as I say the um, initial early earliest sort of impressions um, on my brain are of the bricks and the broken glass and the rusty things that mm -hmm. are around. Um, and Liverpool people, I, yeah. I like being in town, as you see, I'm in Bell Street mm -hmm. often. Yeah. Um, I like. I, oh, the other thing, reason I like being there though, is because just walking down Bell Street, you will hear so many other languages. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love too. It's sort of cosmopolitan I side do. to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, that's it. So this terrifying experience is now over. So it's, it's nice been lovely, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you.